Okay, Buzz YouTube, how's it going everybody? What's up, you UCL fans out there? Now, I was going to try and get this up a little bit sooner in the week, but hopefully I can get this up on Thursday or Friday, if anything. And uh, some of you guys did comment on the week three power rankings, asking me if I was going to make a video on the trades that were made that are effective week four and onwards for the remainder of the UCL season three. And I even had a couple of you guys uh, tweeting me, asking me if I was going to do the video on the trades and stuff. And I think that's pretty cool that you guys do want to hear my thoughts and opinions on the trades uh, that were made. So yeah, this is just going to be me kind of talking about those trades. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to hammer arm that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to go check out the week three power rankings if you haven't already and uh yeah i think with that we can go ahead and jump into this let me know in the comment section below do you like these trades that were made now not everybody made trades for those of you that don't know uh the link to the twitter should be down in the description for the UCL. also a link to the discord and the reddit uh will be down in the description for you guys to go check out as well as a link to all the coaches and for some reason you don't know all the coaches that's a little weird i don't know why you're here i don't know i'm going off topic anyways yeah check out <laughs> all the links uh, down below so let's take a look at the trades here that were made so only the gators and the buffalons uh, decided to not make trades now typically if you have the option it's always i think it's always good to at least do one or two three trades depending on however many you're allowed um in a league because being able to change things up uh can definitely affect future matchups because you're probably able to pick up a threat that maybe your opponent that you face in a rematch in playoffs that you played in the regular season may not be able to answer or maybe you pick up something that is an answer to a threat that your opponent has that you then have to play in playoffs or it's just able to touch up a giant hole that your draft otherwise did have so i don't necessarily agree with uh the buffalons and the gators not making trades like there was definitely some things they could have picked up uh, for example i know that nick did want Palosan. Unfortunately, though, Twit ended up getting Palosan, but I still think he might have been able to get at least another type of Stealth Rocker out of the NU tier. And then the Gators, I'm not really too sure <laughs> what exactly PK would have been able to drop to get something good. Like, he's got five fighting types. Honestly, PK's draft has been kind of impressing me. PK as a player lately has been impressing me. So I'm guessing he does know or he does have a general idea of what he wants to do with this draft. So uh, I guess I can kind of get behind him not really wanting to make any trades. Although if he was a man, he would have dropped Rotom Wash for Keldeo, but I'm just saying. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the teams that actually did make transactions. So for those of you who don't know, uh, everybody was only allowed to make one trade since it was only an eight week uh, season, which is very, very short compared to normal leagues so they were only allowed one trade leading into uh week four and onwards of the season so we're gonna start off with the top team here which is going to be the carolina keldeos dropping porygon 2 for pangoro now i really like this just because jay in my opinion really did need that dark type on his squad and i'm a huge advocate that you always absolutely need to have at least one dark type and at least one ground type those two are the most important typings in a draft in my opinion so definitely try and get those two typings if you are drafting and Pangora also did add a form of momentum as well to pair up with the magneton and the uh, mega beedro because it does get parting shot actually parting shot is kind of cool because now he may have some way of being able to allow something like mini or to have a much easier time setting up uh garchomp can set up easier as well as potentially a blasiphalon because Parting Shot is a move that uh, forces you out, but it also lowers the attack and special attack of your opponent by one stage. So that effectively means that they're going to be a minus one attack and minus one special attack as a Garchomp can come in and Swords Dance, or Blasiphalon can come in and Calm Mind or Substitute, or Minior comes in to Shell Smash and potentially Sweep. So I think that was a really, really good pickup on Jay's part. Pangoro definitely does add a lot to his team. If Jay can play his cards right, like Pangoro could actually be a terror on this type of like bulky bulky squad here so he did give up the porygon 2 bulk but he did gain a heavy hitter in pangoro with a base 124 physical attack stat i'm really hoping that jay will be able to make pangoro work because this draft still has a lot of potential we'll have to see just how jay um plays with it for the rest of the season so moving on to the second trade here that was made we have the 
Grand Canyon Greninja's dropping Jellicent for Palisand. Now, as I mentioned, they did kind of snipe uh, Sacred Fire Negro, coach of the Chicago Buffalons, of the Palisand pick. But Palisand, I think, is actually a very solid addition to the Greninja squad because first off, Jellicent and Tapu Fini, they basically do the same thing. You're never really going to bring them together ever. So if anything, Tapu Fini uh, is definitely the best of the two to keep. And he did make a really good pickup with the Palosan because it also gave him access to yet another Stealth Rocker to go along with the Rhydon, the Necrozma, the Celebi, and the Infernape. This can also now open up options for Rhydon to no longer need to always be uh, the defensive Stealth Rocker. The only downside of Palosan is that because of Water Compaction and how it works, yes, he does gain a defense boost by two stages. He is unfortunately not immune to Water type moves. Palosan actually has some really good bulk, 85 defense, 110 physical defense, and decent 75 uh, base badef, which is pretty respectable with a base 100 uh, special attack set. I think it does get access to uh, earth power. It gets destiny bond as well, which is really awesome, actually. That could be something cool that um, Twit may be able to pull out here. It does get some cool support moves with like a rock tomb, hypnosis even. I would like to see hypnosis palisand. I don't think I've ever seen anybody uh, use hypnosis palisand, so that would definitely be very interesting. So hoping that Twit does make this palisand work on the squad here. So the next mod that we have here is going to be uh, Alamomola being dropped for Primarina by Shady Penguin and the New York Mankeys. Now this is actually very interesting. I do like the fact that he was willing to drop one of his water types but at the same time he kind of picked up another water type although he did add a very good typing to a squad which is going to be the fairy typing it now rounds out his fairy steel dragon core with megalodios heatran and now this primarina uh, at the same time though like the cool thing is is that cloister and primarina are kind of parallel in stat wise like cloister has a skyrocket high defense as where primarina has a skyrocket high special defense stat, and they both have decent bulk uh Cloyster typically hits more often on the physical side, while Primarina hits mostly on, or mainly on the special side. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, they do two different things, like Cloyster can still be defensive, it has spikes, it has a rapid spin. Primarina though, I love Primarina, I definitely think Primarina is an underrated Pokemon in the draft league format. This thing hits like an absolute truck at base 126 special attacks, that pretty solid bulk, base 116 spadef, 74 defense, and 80 base HP, being able to run uh, so many different sets spec scarfed physically defensive especially defensive assault vested uh maybe like substitute would be really cool to see but between hydro pump and moonblast primarina is a very scary offensive threat to deal with if i'm not mistaken it also gets access to dual screens which is really cool even parish song could uh, come in handy in certain matchups if shady plays it well so i really really like this pickup right here i'm a huge advocate of primarina definitely use the guys this thing is a monster and i'm hoping that shady is going to be able to make this work so talking about fairy types, the Tukasan, Tukasan, Tuxan, Tuxan, no, I know it's Tucson. Uh, the Tucson Terrakions, coached by Nappy Boy 92, is going to drop Tyranitar for Clefable. Hoo -hoo -hoo, Clefable, ladies and gentlemen, do not get me started on Clefable, man. This thing is easily, easily like top 10 best Pokemon in the draft league format. I was shocked. I was baffled when I saw that this did not get picked. It does add another fairy type, but realistically Tyranitar, I think wasn't going to be doing entirely too much for his future matchups. Like Tyranitar, don't get me wrong, is a really good Pokemon. I want to say it's like top 10 in the format, but it's definitely a very a versatile mon being able to run uh, multiple choice sets uh, setup sets as well as very effective defensive sets which is a very very good addition to uh, Tyranitar in general but Clefable being able to be that reliable bulky fairy type that I think his team really needed like yeah he does have the Deontay but Deontay doesn't have like the offensive prowess that Clefable can also have. Plus Deontay lacks any type of reliable recovery and the four times weakness to steal can make prepping and being able to deal with it very easily 
uh, for opponents and annoying for Nappy in a sense. So I really do like the Clefable addition. This adds so much to his team. Wish, Underwear is also really good to be able to deal with certain setup mons, Aromatherapy. Uh, it gives them Calm Mind, uh, being able to have another form of setup sweeper. Thunder Wave is amazing for speed control. Trick to be able to maybe cripple things is also really good. If he's a madman, he brings Belly Drum Clefable at least five times because it's awesome. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but Belly Drum Clefable could be kind of cool, I guess. Uh, Knock Off as well is also really good because if you look at his team, the only mon that he really had that learned Knock Off was Hoopa. Now, being able to have that secondary option is, I think, really good in general because if you can get rid of of an opponent's item if that pokemon heavily relies on something like a choice scarf or leftovers and you get rid of that item then that gives you so much benefits in a match and it's going to ensure that that pokemon is then a lot easier to deal with and clefable just does so many different things defensively and offensively obviously it can't be like scarf or I, I mean i guess you could bring scarf but typically you won't ever see it scarf either way though really do like this pickup i want to say this is probably the best pickup out of all the trades so far that um that have been made so moving on to the second to last trade here we have the heated mo and the toronto toga kiss dropping slow bro for sneasel much like jay Mo did not have a dark type and he was able to pick up a very great dark type in my opinion. Sneasel basically functions like a weaker and slower Weavile. It's basically uh, just a lower tier uh, Weavile is what I'm getting at. And it still does basically everything that Weavile does. It's still speedy, hits decently hard, still has Icicle Crash, Knock Off, Pursuit. Uh, it could be Sword Dance potentially and it has the benefit of being able to run a Violite with some... Eh, okay okay-ish like one level under okay-ish bulk <laughs> so it's not entirely too bad it also adds a nice little speed tier to his team uh, to be able to kind of help for future preps in general as well as adding a form of stab priority because the only type of priority he had was sucker punch on needle king and ice shard on dawn fan if i'm not mistaken but now he's got stab ice shard and that is really good knock off is just a move again that you can spam so freely so so freely so that's pretty awesome and a really good pickup in my opinion for mo with his abundance of hazard removal <laughs> stealth rock shouldn't be a problem for Sneasel whatsoever and Slowbro with Milotic was just kind of redundant mostly in the matchups that Mo has had it's felt like Milotic has better matchups than Slowbro in general so I feel like him dropping Slowbro doesn't necessarily hurt him uh, any at all really so the final trade that we have here a lot of Enumons got traded uh, there was only one Oumon with Clefable uh, Primarina is Yuyu and then everything else was Enyu so that's kind of cool being able to see different Enyu Pokemon being picked up for for stuff so the final trade was by num nexus and the pittsburgh pichus dropping a steelix for Silvali steel now for those of you who are wondering well why didn't nexus just get regular Silvali? because it can be every single type regular Silvali is pu uh this season of the ucl they did not allow pu pokemon to be counted in as part of the nu tier uh, i'm not too sure why that's something that you guys want to ask the actual coaches but Regardless though, Savali Steel I definitely think is a much better pickup over Steelix because yeah, Steelix is a very bulky ground and steel type. It also gets access to Stealth Rocks. So that's really it. Like Steelix is just kind of fat and sits there and he already has decent rockers in Yuxi, Nilago, and the Crocodile that Steelix just kind of was... I guess a little bit of dead weight in a sense, at least by having Silvali, he is able to have a bit of a speedier Mon, uh, slightly bulkier on the special defensive side, higher base HP, as well as another form of momentum in a parting shot, and I already covered parting shot with Pangoro, it forces you out but also lowers your opponent's attack and special attack, and this can be absolutely huge just like jay can take advantage of that nexus can also take advantage of that with things like calm mind tapu coco uh victini uh offensive victini in general would love that because it can just come in v create and your opponent is either going to be forced out or they're not going to be doing much damage in return after a hit sweet kun has an easier time of setting up nahiligo has an easier time of potentially sweeping maybe substituting Curse Lax can set up easier, Zydog can maybe Dragon Dance now, Yuxi can Calm Mind as well, so there's so much that Parting Shot honestly adds to Nexus's squad, 
Plus, Silvali just has a very, very diverse move pool. Also gets access to Swords Dance, which is pretty awesome. So this gives them potentially another form of setup. Some nice speed control with Thunder Wave as well as also giving him a, a third form of Hazard Removal, which now takes the pressure off of Tapu Koko and Serena. So that's another really huge benefit of Silvali on Nexus's squad. Yeah, guys, didn't want to make this entirely too long. Actually, it's already a little longer than I had wanted it to be. But let me know what you guys think about these trades in the comment section below. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Uh, what do you think the coaches might have been able to pick up instead? What do you think the Gators and the Buffalons would have been able to get if they did decide to make trades instead of not making trades at all so yeah let me know guys in the comment section below i will be reading all the comments and if you did enjoy the video hammer arm that thumbs up button i will see you all next week with the fourth week of power ranking so with that being said i hope you all did enjoy and i will see you all later so later everybody no matter where you're at i'm not here to make friends it's time to attack and deplete your hp with a final smash don't make me turn around and pull a six foot Hacks. Hacks. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks.